This is Sienna, and you are listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. Hi, this is Allie, and you're listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. one to the two two to the three in the place to be it is bq and it is the king of the mountain podcast impact review if it's your first time here on the channel hit the subscribe button and even leave a comment let us know your first time listener and i'm curious to know who your favorite impact stars are so do so in the comments after you hit the subscribe button if you're already subscriber go ahead and give us a thumbs up on youtube if you're a Podbean listener thank you for swinging by as well Please hit the subscribe button there if that's the platform you use. If you're on Apple Podcasts, I would really appreciate a five-star review and rating. If you visit kotmpodcast.site, S-I-T-E, every Sunday, you can uh, get the updated episode of the uh, Impact Review. So it'll have the uh, Podbean link and the YouTube link. And there's some blogs there and mailing list sign up, which the mailing list is kind of now where I want it to be. So I'm going to start utilizing it hadn't been utilizing it for a while if you're a facebooker hit up the impact fan zone facebook.com slash impact wrestling fz that is the best community on facebook to go if you're a global force wrestling fan and shout out to the impact heads and the heel cast and all our brethren that are fighting the good fight for the global force wrestling brand andre corbeil shout out to you you got your youtube channel back I think it's going to be kind of up and running in about a month. So, uh, you know, he might he might tell you guys what happened. I'm not going to uh, go into that because that's his business. But it did uh, he did get approved to get the channel back. So those of you who have been uh, missing his channel, it is back in action. My co-host today is a regular here on the show. It is Ro the Great. What is going on with you, my man? Uh, not much, man. It's just trying to survive this hot Cali weather, man. <laughs> I miss California a lot, but I, I can't say I miss some of the real hot days. I've lived in Florida, too, so I mean, I, I've dealt with the heat. So now, here in Illinois, I'm kind of enjoying it. It's, it's starting to get a little bit cool out, but um, I'm going to hate life here in about two months. When uh, <laughs> You know, when, uh, I'm going to be, I have military training in Texas in the month of November, so I'll be gone all of November. And when I leave Illinois, it should be decent, and then I'm going to come back to snow. So <laughs> not looking forward to that shit at all. So, folks, we, myself and Ro recorded this show yesterday, and I haven't had a pretty, I haven't had a bad technical difficulty in a little while. This time, it, uh, I was getting ready to edit the show, and our vocals recorded at three times slower the speed than we were speaking. So you heard me like, one to the two, two to the three. So I texted Ro late, and um, thank God he's on West Coast time, and he was kind of still up. I said, hey, we, we got to knock this out in the morning. So uh, thanks for rolling with the punches, man. Hey, man, any time, man. It's all good, man. I'm a early bird. <laughs> so let's talk impact here. Um, I will say this is about three weeks in a row that I'm really enjoying the show. I probably say this every single episode, but I wasn't a big fan of the India tapings, and then after Slammiversary, I thought they were really – hit or miss you know i wasn't i was entertained but i wasn't uh i wasn't in love with them these three these last three episodes i thought have been really good i don't know what got into the impact zone these last three and especially this episode but they were engaged the crowds were fuller larger louder made for so much more of an enjoyable show to watch would you agree with me on that yeah, I agree. Um, and I think, you know what, I, and I don't expect every show to be like, a, you know, a perfect 10. But I think what we're seeing with these episodes is there's progression with as far as storylines and whatnot and, you know, development of, you know, certain characters. So I think that's something that, um, you know, gets fans engaged and, you know, want them to tune in. And it's showing in the uh, impact zone as far as the audience. I mean, you could be watching... And I've always said on the podcast, people watch. There's not as many uh, part goers as you think. If you just people watch, you're, you're going to see that there's certain people that just respond to different segments differently. And with this one, if you were looking in the front, you were looking in the stands, you just saw people clapping, standing. I mean, they were they were really engaged. And 
in the impact zone, the way it works is when they come back for like from a commercial, JB will usually hype up the crowd, and that's why you know you'll see them standing, clapping, and all that. And then it tends to like die down a little. But the energy was really good for this. And I'd seen pictures online floating around about with this crowd where people from the impact zone were saying, well, they weren't promoting anything different. It wasn't a, you know, cause they have like a boys and girls night coming up and uh, you know, they're doing the Latino night and they, you know, they're doing some really smart marketing things that uh, builds in the community, but it also puts some butts in the seats too. So it's a uh, pretty smart stuff, but they said, you know, for these, uh, for the night of Friday that they were taping these two episodes, they said they weren't promoting anything special. People just came to watch the product. So, it's two nights in a row. So next week's show is supposed to have a pretty good crowd too. From what I understand, because I always talk to my people in the Impact Zone, from what I understand, the following episodes after that, that was done on... Okay, no, that was... So the first one is... Thir- no, so there's going to be two more. So we've seen the two Thursday ones. The next one will be done on Friday as well. There'll be two Saturday episodes. And then the one on Sunday... So there's going to be two weeks where, you know, that Sunday was SummerSlam. When, when, and I believe that the uh, crowd's a little bit smaller for that, but it seems like the turnout was really good. And um, I, do, I just, I don't know, like I, I study color theory and things like that. And I really think the the green ropes just add liveliness. You know, back, you remember back when there was the black ropes, I've seen pictures. I was watching a uh, clip with Mike Bennett the other day. I don't remember why I wasn't watching it for him, but he was in it and it had the black ropes and the, and it just, the atmosphere felt so dull. Yeah, they, you know what, I, I'm all for them doing, you know, something different. Like, I, I remember, I'll take it a step further. I remember when they got away from this excited ring and they uh, used a traditional size ring. And tell me why, and it's so crazy, you know, you're so used to watching wrestling with a four-sided ring. And, you know, you're accustomed to, you know, what, back then TNA with the six-sided. When they went to that four-sided ring, it looked so weird. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? So, you know, and then with the black ropes, too, you know, same thing. So I think adding the green, you know, it gives it, you know, a different, you know, little flavor and stuff like that. So I, I like it. I just I just think, you know, green is synom- synonymous with go. And I think it just livens up the, the atmosphere. So I'm a big fan of the green. I think some of the colors that they have contrasting it within the ring don't don't really look good with green. So, you know, maybe they make a few adjustments. They hyped the Global Wrestling Network again on the episode. I did a whole video on this on YouTube, but but I hadn't watched Impact yet. So once I heard them speak speak on it again, I kind of wish I could go back and do another video, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm starting to think now because they keep tossing around the word free. I don't think it's going to be free. I think it's going to be a free download because every app is a free download. But I think the selling point is that you can watch reruns of Impact. And this is strictly speculation, no insider knowledge. I think they're going to do reruns of Impact for free. They, they did not have us under the impression that they were going to stream the live episode. And by live, I mean whatever's on TV. You know, because they brought up, you can see Hulk Hogan, AJ Styles. They started uh, listing off all these old names. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to be one of the selling points of Okay, you can download the free app. You can watch old episodes of Impact. And most likely the way they'll monetize that is by running ads on the app. And then perhaps there's going to be a subscription service from there. Because there's got to be some kind of subscription service. Because if this is the same app or an updated app of what they're using in the UK, and I believe the UK one still exists, you can't have a 100% one free in the United States. And you'll go under if it's free because it's... You remember the other network needed a million subscribers until they broke even? So, Mm -hmm. um, and I know the production behind that and this is probably two different things, but there's got to be some kind of subscription service. What I'm thinking is you can watch the reruns and then you can order the, uh, the, uh, pay-per-views just like you're using a fight app. What do you think? Well, I think first, I think they're still trying to figure it out themselves, which is scary in the sense because it's like, all right, you've already kind of told us fans and, you know, fans are, you know, engaged. I've seen, you know, a lot of people talking about it, you know, looking forward to subscribing. And it's kind of like if you don't deliver on some of these things you're advertising, you know, that's going to be, a, you know, another, you know, kick in the gut and stuff. But um, I think they will end up charging. My, my question is how, like, I could see if you're providing, like, say, uh, um like the, you know, previous episodes of Impact, you know, just say for, you know, people who 
aren't able to catch it on Thursdays. And, you know, I could even see if you're, you know, showing some of the old TNA library, but just say, you know, because they've, you know, are branding it as a global network. So we're, I'm under the mindset we're going to see some Crash and some Noah, all these partnerships they have. Like, how are you able to air that material for free? You know, that that's one thing. And I, I think, you know, if they do, which I, I'm assuming they do charge, I think, you know, if you put the price tag, what, five ninety nine, six ninety nine, and then, you know, or even like you were saying with the pay-per-views, maybe you can p- purchase pay-per-views on there. I think that'll be fine and stuff. But they just got to, whatever they're coming up with, they got to make sure they deliver, man. They do. And, it, you know, there's probably going to be some, they got to roll with the punches a little bit and make some adjustments along the way. So from what I heard, the uh, UK app wasn't super user friendly right away, but they started uh, making adjustments and they were, you know, putting episodes of old episodes of Impact on there completely out of order and everything. So I'm really excited for it. I, th- I kind of agree with you. I don't know if they know exactly <laughs> what it is quite yet that they're tr- trying to accomplish, but we're getting kind of close kind of close to d-day and they need to start letting us know because that was the marketing boo-boo that the other company made is that they focused so much on the price tag they never told they never said what the content was and right now they're kind of focusing on this oh free episodes of impact but we're completely lost and they're saying well it's coming out this month and we have no idea what is coming out exactly and i remember during slammiversary people were uh and I hadn't seen this in a long time because, you know, the pay-per-view model has changed because of that network. But people were bitching like, I can't believe they had the nerve to charge 50 bucks for a pay-per-view. I'm like, that's what wrestling pay-per-views always are. You know, maybe 40 bucks. But, you uh, you know, it, they probably should have went with 40, but we're not experts in that, in that ballpark. Usually um, the big shows are in the 50 ballpark. But... I don't remember the last time I got a Ring of Honor pay-per-view, but I remember paying 35, 40 bucks for him. So it's not out of the realm of, you know, normalcy by any means. But I think they do know that. I think they're like, okay, we probably can't charge that for pay-per-views going forward. So I think that's why the timing of this is the way it is because, you know, B- BFG's coming up. Yeah, I I, uh, um, I I think, though, too, the pay-per-view business as a whole, like people, you know, people think, you know, because the network – you know, for as far as for wrestling killed it, but I think pay per view business was dying just for the simple fact. You know, you got people who, uh, um, you know, whether it's a big fight or something like that, you can go and watch their Periscope, and you know, they're airing the whole thing till you know over hundred thousand people and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you're you're getting one person paying, and you know, all these fa- uh, eyes are watching it. You know. I think that's what's killed it right there. But, uh, yeah, they just got to put it at a decent price and stuff. And I think, you know, one thing they could air on the network, why not a, uh, air Explosion? Yeah, that would be great. You could do that to lead, leading up into Impact. So, you know, a uh, viewer can walk, you know, go in, tune into Explosion, but then they would have to make sure the stuff that they air on Explosion ties into, you know, lead, leads up into Impact. Because if you throw just uh, uh, have uh, some throwaway matches and stuff like that, you know, it's not going to make any sense. But if you have something that ties in, just say for the casual viewer who maybe just wanted to get the network to watch Crash and watch Noah, and you know they, you know, happen to come across come across the explosion, and you know they find it to be really good, it's like okay, well, make sure to tune in, you know, at nine o'clock or you know whatever time you know you're on time zone you're on, uh, tune into Impact, and then you know they advertise whatever they advertise. There you go, right there. So that might be a good idea. All right, so let's get an impact. It kicks off with Eli Drake's championship celebration. I think a majority of us fans aren't huge on the talking segments opening the show, but this one's different because it's Eli Drake. We can listen to him talk all day. Thought he was really funny here when he was telling the story about the cougar and the jugs and the milk and the hilarious, hilarious stuff. I thought even Chris Adonis looked okay here. I mean, he, he I think he talked a little bit. Um, but just the way they came out with the cigars and the suits, I mean, I thought it I thought it fit. I want to know what your thoughts are in the opening segment and then then uh additionally I want to know your thoughts. I feel like what Eli Drake is really missing is like a valet, not a wrestling valet, but like a like a hot girl that just comes out with him, riding the the gravy train, so to speak. So, uh, first, what are your thoughts on the opening segment? And then, wh- what do you think about that idea? 
Um, as far as the opening segment, I mean, you know, I know at times as fans, we don't like talking segments, but I think for this case, it works only because this was a way to reestablish Eli Drake as, you know, a big time player, so to speak, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we've seen in, you know, we've all, well, I don't want to speak for us all, but I know some of us fans who are fans of Eli Drake, you know, how he had been misutilized and all of a sudden he wins the championship. It's like, okay. So I thought this was a way to you know, re- reintroduce him and reestablish him as a main event guy. Um, and I, I think it came off well. Um, as far as the valet, I think it would work more so if, like, say if he was a bad talker maybe. Because I think, like, like in, for me with valets a lot, you know, I, I kind of associate it some with some mid-card talent. You know, unless unless it's a main event guy, like, or, you know, whatever, who isn't really a talker. And I, I feel like with the Eli Drake's character, a valet especially, you know, you get him some hot, you know, uh, woman, you know, to be his valet. His character, that's taken away from his shine, you know, so. All right, fair enough. So Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards come out. Johnny Impact, um, his promo skills are pretty decent. I always felt, felt as a uh, baby face, they were very watered down because he's kind of a snarky guy. And as, as a heel, he, he was pretty good. But I think he's past that point in his career where he can do heel work. Eddie Edwards came out. And uh, I don't know if Eddie Edwards needs to take a class or a seminar or something like that on public speaking or speaking clearly, whatever. But he just was so mush mouth through this entire thing stumbling all over his words and you know i'm a huge fan of eddie edwards he's really one of my top three or four guys so i'm not really talking bad on him in that sense but it's kind of like here with podcasting i speak a lot different when i'm conducting my podcast than i would if you know you and i are talking face to face or offline or something like that um i project my voice totally different i enunciate totally different so i think eddie edwards doesn't doesn't have that yet you know, when you, uh, Drew Galloway used to say, there's the Drew Galloway you talk to out of, out of wrestling where you probably can't in, understand a word I say because of my accent. And then there's a Drew Galloway on the microphone who knew how to, how to clear up his speech. And that's an area where I think Bram struggles with too as well. But I don't know. Uh, so what'd you think about when Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards came out? Um, I'm thinking with Eddie Edwards too, I've never actually seen his top row of teeth, so he may not have any. <laughs> but um, what what are your what are your thoughts on how it progressed? I thought it was a little paint by numbers having the guy the guys come out during the championship celebration and all that. I think uh, you know once again I'll go you know, use the term as far as you know reestablishing or this this time I'll use establishing. I think this was showing you kind of some new faces in the main event. Like potentially these are guys we're gonna see Eli Drake working with, which is great. It's it's good to have um, some new faces mix it up because you know as much as I love Lashley and EC3 and stuff like that, I feel like you know we've seen them in the title picture way so much. So to get some new faces, and I, I know Eddie Edwards is a former champion and stuff like that, but you know to see him and then Johnny Impact, you know mixing it up and you know hopefully we get some more you know guys down the road, you know it freshens up the main event scene. It does. One thing that I found kind of funny, if it reminded me of like Gail Kim, Edward, Eddie Edwards said the title belongs to him. I'm like, how? You lost fair and square in the gauntlet. You, uh, I guess maybe were maybe were cheated at, out, out of the title months ago when Davy uh, Davy interfered. But by no means do I think this title belongs to Eddie Edwards. So I thought that was kind of funny. But again, love Eddie Edwards. I don't think he gets enough credit sometimes. And Jim Cornette came, came out, and this is why I said this was a little paint by numbers with professional wrestling. You know, there's a celebration, there's the guys that come out, there's the authority figure who makes a tag team match. But he made a good main event for the evening, and that's Johnny Impact and Eddie Edwards against Drake and Adonis. And if Eddie Edwards or Johnny Impact get the pin, they get a title shot. If Drake gets the pin, or I don't know if it's him or if Adonis' his team wins, period then he doesn't have to defend against either. So pretty good opening segment. After this, a couple of my favorite knockouts talking. Ali goes backstage, finds Terrell and Taryn Terrell and catering, wants wants to know why 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 were you so mean to Miss Gale? And uh I thought Taryn hadn't skipped a beat as far as she's just she's a great actress. 
and um, she does really good in a setting like that. And I actually really felt bad for Allie because she caught her with that forearm, kicked her in the back, and then when she threw her against that, I don't even know what those things are called, um, but when she threw her against her, I mean, she really looked like she went head first, and I actually really felt bad for Allie, and I think she does great as a sympathetic character. So any thoughts on this backstage segment? Um, I liked it in the sense of um, it gives us, like, you know how you stated before in the past, like, and, you know, I know both these women are, you know, capable, you know, of competing for, challenging for the uh, Knockouts Championship, but uh, it gives us, uh, you know, a mini feud, you know, that's not evolving the title, you know, amongst the Knockouts and stuff, so I'm all for that stuff, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it gives Ali something to do, uh, you know, hopefully break away from Braxton for a little bit. Because, you know, I like seeing Ali mix it up in the ring. Right. And I saw someone on YouTube, because I watched a segment on YouTube a couple times on the Impact channel. And someone had left a comment, they can't act like Ali can't wrestle forever. And, you know, I, I told them, I was like, well, they're not acting like she can't wrestle. She just, she has the airhead gimmick. And we talked about this offline, that that just seems where they're going to continue to go with her. Because that's just her character. But at Slammiversary, she wrestled just fine. And I, I expect her to wrestle just fine here as well when they have their match next week that we'll get into a little bit but it's just her gimmick and she was technically jumped so you can't really uh compare that to the alley of uh of old that was in the ring and excited because she was putting a headlock on <laughs> so uh next match is falaba and mario bokara versus ove and they still don't know how to pronounce this guy's name um dave pencer always calls him mario bokara and uh, from what I understand, it's Bokara. That's how I've heard him say it himself. So it was Falaba and Mario Bokara versus Ohio versus everything. I thought this was match. I, my, well, first of all, I was very concerned that Ba and Bokara were going to get squashed because they had really good showings in the gauntlet. I didn't think they deserved to come out and lose in under two minutes by any means. I thought it was a pretty good match. Um, what do you think about this one, and how do you compare it to the first couple OVE, OVE, I'm tripping over myself, OVE matches, where at first they had that, you know, quote-unquote squash match where they the, uh, the opponents appeared to get more offense in than they did, and then they had the match the next week where they got a lot of offense in. So how what do you think of this one? How do you compare it to what we've seen so far? And are they connecting? It looks like, you know, more and more they're getting better with their matches. I feel like each one you know, that they've had now, because I, I want to say they're third. Like, uh, it looks like you see it's getting better. Like, this is uh, it's clicking. And But, you know, the one thing I take away from this match, and not to take anything away from OVV, OVE, because I like what they've done thus far, um, it seems, I don't know, because I think last week too, but Boss seems over with the Impact crowd, man. And, you know, I hope, you know, backstage, you know, they're looking at, you know, they find something to do with him because I think he could be used in a better capacity. And, you know, Bokar, too, uh, you know, nobody's saying challenge for the world title and stuff, but um, as a sick-ass German suplex, I mean, I'm sure he can mix it up in the mid-card. I would just really like to see them use both guys to a better capacity because, at least in Boss' case, he seems like he's over. I agree. And uh, as I said in the gauntlet, Mario Bokaro was kind of my – my star there I was really uh, he was probably the one I was most impressed with with you know him actually getting some time and and looking really well and yeah those um German shoot suplexes are pretty impressive I like the masks that they come out with and uh, you know if this were Vince Russo talking and they didn't have the masks he said they would come you know he would be complaining that they were coming out and who are they what are their characters and I think uh I think the masks add a little something something different uh, when they come out, so I do like that. The finisher was a little bit like the LAX one, um, but uh, and I, I mean maybe not, but I kind of I kind of felt that when they when they hit it. But it was still a short match, but Ba and Bokara did get some offense in, so not too bad. OVE's doing pretty well so far. They need to work on their uh, backstage segments because the couple I've watched on YouTube have. Um, it just it just sounds like my homie talking to me. It's not um don't sound like professional wrestlers cutting a promo. So I think they gotta do a little bit better, but it'll happen. They're you know, they're career indie guys, so it'll come out in time. 
Jim Cornette is backstage talking with Moose about um, getting to work at Triple Mania. This is a couple times, the a uh, couple times in the episode where they address Triple Mania, but Triple Mania has already happened. So this was um, kind of a slip up. I think they were not timing things properly here. EC3 comes in. Do you find it funny at all that this is the second time EC3 and Moose have been around each other, and Moose's posture didn't change nothing? I mean, you would think this guy wants his title back, maybe that one that was so important to him that he was defending all around the world, loses it in a controversial fashion and just doesn't seem to give a shit anymore. So the second time we've seen him ex- next, to, next to EC3 just chilling. You know, it's common in wrestling times. And I mean, whether it's like, you know, the way I kind of take it is, you know, he's a two-time grand champion. You know, maybe he's trying to move up and challenge for the global force title. But we've seen this before in, you know, all promotions at once upon a time where a guy loses his belt you know, whether he was screwed out of it or, you know, whatever the case. And then next week they're feuding with somebody else. You know, you know, we're all been told about the rematch clauses and whatnot. I mean, there's a lot of times where it's not even invoked. You know, you see somebody else as a number one contender and stuff. So, I mean, it's not really a big deal. I just hope, you know, they, you know, they didn't just give, you know, EC3 the grand championship just to kind of put a title on him and not, you know, have him, you know, being able to defend it and stuff like that. Right, because we don't want back those King of the Mountain title days where where the guys were holding the title and they weren't even defending it. Um, I thought uh, Eric Young's reign at, reign at the end was horrendous as um, just one of the worst mid-card title reigns in a while, in my opinion. So let's hope that's not what it is. Um, Jim Cornette lets EC3 know that he has a match with Phantasma next week. EC3 is showing, showing a lot of charisma with this title, which we have not seen so far from someone who holds it but again you know right in front of moose he's like hey you got a match with phantasma next week and moose is good to good to go good luck ec3 i don't want the title back so yeah just still kind of weird to me you know what kind of worries me though and i was thinking about this yesterday if you know the history of this company they've never really been behind a mid-card title like if you notice it's always been you know your world championship your x division your tag and your knockouts their mid card titles have always kind of gotten the shaft. I can't think. Maybe the TV when they had the TV title, that was one they put. They had a, the open uh, where the I don't know if it was open fight or something, but it was defended every week. But I, I'm kind of starting to see this with the championship, and I fear that because I think they need a mid card title, and I feel like they've invested enough with the grand championship that they just need to roll with it. Maybe tweak the rules a little bit or whatever the case may be, but they need to roll with it. I feel like if they scrap this to create another one, I mean, it's just better. You're better off just doing with that at this point. That's just my take. Right. If they were to bring the next gen title in, which um, it's rumored Jeff Jarrett wants to do that, and they they do a um, unification, I think they could get away with that. But at this point, you've you've committed to the title. You can't just get rid of another mid card title. It wasn't. It just felt like yesterday they got rid of the King of the Mountain title. So let's see. Petey Williams has his first match in eight years versus Caleb Conley. My only issue with this early on is that they were hyping up Petey Williams' return match so much that they made it feel like he was wrestling in a squash match against some random jobber. Caleb Conley, Caleb Conley wasn't even on the match graphic. So do you feel like, first of all, before getting into the match, do you feel like they're trying to go a route with Caleb Conley because I watched his YouTube video where he's like, I hope Trevor likes my new trunks and he's dressed exactly like him. Um, kind of like 80s tag team wrestling. Do you feel like that's they're kind of going a uh, a route where they're going to take advantage of Trevor Lee's uh, charisma that he's been showing lately and just have Caleb Conley as like the understudy? Yeah, I, I could see that. And I think it's good for him because it gives him something to do and stuff like that. And, you know, I think we all kind of know, not to fantasy book, but, you know, the end game would probably be, you know, Con feuding with Lee down the road and stuff like that. But I think right now, seeing him on the TV, because I like Caleb Conley's work for, you know, the little time we see him on TV. Like, I think this is fine for him. So I thought this match was pretty entertaining. Got a decent amount of time. Caleb Conley got some offense in, and I don't know that we even know what Caleb Conley's finisher is because I don't think he's ever won a match. Um, he doesn't really come across like a jobber by any means. I just I just think he didn't have any anything to his character. So, you know, the randomly he's a heel now, which is fine, but at least it's giving him something to do. 
What were your thoughts on the match and how PD Williams looked after all this time? Because from what I understand, he was semi-retired. I don't believe he was doing indie dates or anything like that. He's getting up there in age. Um, what, what were your thoughts on the match? And did you think that PD Williams should have got like a showcase match instead of something competitive? Well, you know, I felt even though this was competitive, I felt like he got to showcase a lot of his stuff. I mean, a lot of his offense, that's stuff that uh, he was doing 10 years ago. So it looked like he didn't miss a beat. The thing that I like, though, you know, with them bringing him in and, you know, Conley getting to work with him. And I'm hoping, you know, some other uh, some of the younger X Division guys getting to work with him is it's always good to be able to get rid of, I mean, to be able to work with a vet, you know, such as PD Williams and stuff, someone who, you know, seasoned in the X division, you know, can help them along the way, you know, showing them the X division style and whatnot. But I thought it was fine. And he was able to showcase what he wanted to do at, without, you know, burying Conley in the process. Right. So they set up a match for next week because PD Win- Williams gets the win with the Canadian destroyer. Sanjay comes out wearing God knows what. And they set up a tag team match for next week, which will be P.D. Williams and Sanjay versus Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee. I think it's safe to say Caleb Conley is going to eat the pin in this thing, but it's um, we're getting a nice X Division tag team match. So I think that should be really enjoyable. Dick Justice is then informed that he's uh, got a match tonight. I kind of wish he would wear all black because you can see his testicles clear as day. Uh-huh. Not, a, not a big fan of that. Uh... Karen Jarrett is backstage with Taryn and Sienna, and they have a weird dynamic. It's almost like it's a friendship, but it's not a friendship. Sienna kind of wants nothing to do with her, and Taryn seems to enjoy being around her. It's it just a little strange. I don't know. I don't know if they're um, meaning for it to come across like that or if it's just coming across awkward on TV. But I thought Karen Jarrett was good here. You know, she's she's good when she's quick and to the point. Uh, you remember that segment with Karen Jarrett backstage and uh, <laughs> with uh, Bruce Pritchard, and she's like all yelling at the top of her lungs and her voice is cracking. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. I, you know, my thing is, and I think, um, you know, when we talk about authority figures, I feel like if you're gonna do it, just give us one. Like if Cornette's gonna come out, let him be the the authority figure for the for the night like i hate seeing cornette then karen and stuff i just feel like she brings nothing nothing to you know the angles if anything i feel like she takes away more you know like i don't know i mean maybe we agree to disagree i, I just when i seen her pop up i was like oh god you know but <laughs> i don't mind her as part of the like you know being in charge of the knockouts that doesn't bug me at all if she were to come out during you know a guy segment i, I could see that argument but I don't mind her in charge of the knockouts. She uh she booked a tag team match for next week, and it's going to be Gail, Miss Gail, and Allie versus Sienna and Taryn Terrell. I'm really praying. I don't know how far my prayers are going to go because this match has already happened, but I'm really praying that um it gets some time and we see something different, and that Allie isn't just there to to eat a quick pin or something like that. Um, this has a, this has an opportunity to be a really good knockouts tag team match. So. Looking forward to that. That I think that's what I'm really looking forward to for next week. But I thought Karen did okay in this role here. She she teased that there's going to be a stipulation. So let's hope it's nothing um nothing too crazy. But um we'll see. So Dick Justice has a match that lasts less than a minute, and he goes against Congo Kong. Dick Justice walking out to the ring looked like he was not sure where the ring was, and uh, his opponent is Congo Kong. And Kongu Kong gets the uh, the quick win. He came off the top rope, and I was a little worried because it looked like Dick Justice kind of got his knees up, so I didn't know if one of those two guys got hurt. But, you know, it's it's another Kongu Kong squash match, and that's fine. They got to find something for him to do. And uh, Shira came out. They've had a little bit of a history. And uh, this, was, this was done to set up Kong versus Shira. So do you have um, any thoughts on this one at all? Um, as far as the match or the post match angle? Uh, just just in general. In general. Um the match was fine. I'm just trying to reestablish Kongo Kong as a monster. Um, you know, as far as Shira appearing and stuff, I'm fine with that, but it's just moving forward, you know, what what's the plan for either one of these guys? You know, Kongo Kong, is he just gonna be the resident monster just, 
you know, facing randoms or do they actually have plans for something with Shira? You know, I'm, I feel like Shira's approved in some, some ways, but what's the next step for these guys? You know, like, yeah. So uh, the unfortunate thing with Congo Kong is that he was, had a t angle with Tyrus coming up. Tyrus is now gone. So now Congo Kong is in a difficult, difficult place. Um, my, my man, Ashley, who runs a slam down YouTube channel, uh, that's out of the UK. He interviewed Congo Kong the other day, and uh, so definitely look that up, Slam Down, the Congo Kong interview. Um, there was a couple things that I found really interesting. One, he asked them what was the goal with Tyrus, what was you building to, and he said from what he understood, it was going to be a match. He kind of alluded to Bound for Glory. He didn't, he didn't say so many words, but alluded to the fact that it was going to be Tyrus and his uh, co-host from Fox News against Congo Kong and somebody. So I, I don't know who they would pair Kong, Kong with. So he said he was he was very disappointed because that was a high profile angle that he could have been involved with. And then, um, you know, Ashley also asked him about the 10 percent. And he said, yes, it was in the contracts, but it's nothing that's been enforced. It's I think it's something to kind of take care of the, the company in a case of injuries or things like that. But, you know, he said in his personal opinion, if impact makes the booking for him, if they're the booking agent, then he has no problem paying that 10%. But if he gets the booking on his own, then he says, he's not sure how fair that is. And I think that's, that's a pretty fair uh, assessment. I think that's how everyone kind of feels about it. Yeah. And see, you know, what's the funny thing about that? Now see people who hear, they're not going to hear the first portion that he said, they'll hear the last one and roll with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's how the uh, wrestling world works, unfortunately. All right. So now we get James Storm making his comeback match. No, um, no vignettes, no video packages, just James Storm, just returning from injury. And, um, while I thought this match to be excellent, had some good near falls that the crowd was into um when i was watching james storm i was thinking wow what for his size what an impressive move set he has um and he plays the crowd so well i'm trying to enjoy him as much as possible in case that he doesn't resign past his contract in uh january but were you able to get into this match as good as it was knowing that low-key is not even really a part of the roster anymore because now we got it we got to sit through low-key now for a few more weeks well, you know, part of me feels, I mean, I don't know if it's just a done done deal, but I kind of, and maybe it's just optimism on my part, but I feel like maybe they will they might be able to negotiate something and stuff because I feel like low-key, a part of a LAX, man, you know, it's been a good fit. And it's like if he departs and stuff, you don't want to see it like a revolving door with, you know, LAX trying to fill in, you know, that fifth member, so to speak. But for me, um, as good as the match was for me, to be honest with you, to me, this was just lazy uh, storytelling. And what I mean by that is last time we seen James Storm, he was concussed from at Slammiversary. So to just to throw him in a match like this with no backstory, I mean, they could have run so much, you know, they could have ran a, you know, a vignette of, you know, him, you know, on the road to recovery or whatever, you know. So to just throw him in a match like that and just figure out, right, here, just go. I just felt like that was lazy storytelling on creative's part. But, uh, um, yeah, it's tough to to kind of watch, and it's gonna be tough to watch, you know, seeing uh, you know, low key, you know, in these matches, knowing that you know he's gone from the company. Right, he's the biggest part of LAX at the moment, so kind of unfortunate. Do you think that we're gonna see a James Storm title run? Because I love James Storm, probably my top two. I just I really feel that he's not gonna be with the company past the year or past his current contract, not because he doesn't want to be, but I just think he's accomplished so much. I think he would like to move on and try something new. And um, I, I just kind of get that from his interview. So do you think it's it's a possibility? Because uh, before, I, before I get your answer, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I, I think there's an Eli Drake face turn coming. However, it's hard to hold the title for a really long time, time as a face. I can just see a scenario where Alberto comes back as the heel, Adonis maybe turns on him. So I, I, it, it's hard to envision a James Storm title run, but what do you think? Um, as far as the face turn, I'll get to what you're saying with Eli. I think his face turn is just going to happen kind of organically. I don't think it's going to be a situation where people are going to turn on him. And you already see it now, you know, when people are chanting, you know, dummy, yeah, along with them. And it's, it's kind of like, um, and I hate to use his reference, but when you look at like the old, uh, I want to say, 
uh, early 99 rock, you know, that's those were some of the chants he was getting where he would uh, be doing his chick and, and uh, fans would be, you know, repeating everything he would say. And then he'd be like, hey, you know, don't do that and stuff. But as far as the Storm title run, um, once again, optimism on my part. I could see them doing it, but probably towards the end of the year, maybe do something like, you know, he wins it, um, I don't know, like after, you know, Bound for Glory or something like that, and then he loses it at the end of the year. So, like, maybe like a month title reign, which, I mean, I know we all wanted, you know, want to see him get a long, lengthy title reign, but, I mean, to hold it for a month, that beats, you know, how long he held it for in the past. <laughs> yeah. so. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say the night after Bound for Glory, there's going to be a title match because there always is after the pay-per-views. And uh, I don't know. It's hard to envision at this point, but it, it would be the right thing to do. So maybe he does a per-date deal for a little while after the contract is up. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So we get um, we get throughout the night footages of uh, Dan Lambert, America's top team, oh, yeah. Cornette, Jarrett. Don't you feel like... I was invested in this a couple weeks ago, but now I'm feeling like it's kind of overkill. It's too much. You know, they have a bunch of other angles going on that don't have to be involved on impact every single week. But it seems like this is the one that, you know, I, I think I think they address it like three times throughout the show here. I feel like it's becoming a little bit of overkill. And without reading spoilers, because I don't, I really fear that they are building towards Jeff Jarrett versus Dan Lambert or... Um, some kind of tag team match that over Lashley's contract or something that that's where I really feel like it's going. Um, but again, I, I don't look into the future with the spoilers, but so what do you think about this? Is this a little bit too much for you too? Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I, first when we seen that destination X, you know, I was all right with it, but it's overkill at this point. It does it for me. It does nothing. You know, it, it, it and to take it a step further, it seems less about Lashley and more about, you know, Lambert and Jarrett at this point. Because every time, you know, we see the interactions, it's always, you know, them, you know, they'll shake hands and next, you know, they're, you know, throwing out some kind of expletives and stuff like that. And then you just see Lashley trying to play peacemaker. Lashley needs to be in that ring, you know, beating fools up and stuff like that. Not in this angle, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's not doing a whole lot for me either. And I guess we're going to see what happens. Um, I, I'm sure it's going to continue on to next week and every week after that. We get a Joseph Park, Grado, and Laurel. So Laurel and Grado are cupcaking up. And this is why I beg people to just let stuff play out and to not overanalyze things. Because people kept saying, oh, well, Laurel's from Canada. Da, 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 da. I mean, you can go on a forum, you can go on Twitter, on Facebook. People were bitching about this. And I say bitching because people really were overanalyzing this. And now, ta-da, it's part of the storyline. They don't know that Laurel's from Canada. So let stuff play out, people. I found this to be funny. I found it to be a good uh, wrinkle in the storyline so we're not just building towards another wedding. Now it's Now they're even showing that Laurel maybe is still is a little bit crazy. You know, as opposed to last week, she looked like she was completely, you know, good to go. So, uh, thoughts on this? Yeah, um, you know what I think with the f whole Canadian thing, they kind of were born her because most of their knockouts, with exception to Sienna, are Canadian. So, who else were you going to use? You know what I mean? Like, like they, they, they kind of were booked in the corner on that one. But uh, um, it was fine. I, I just like it just because it, I, I felt like with, uh, Laurel, and you could still use her in a crazy a uh, aspect, but you know, getting away from the wedding dress I needed to see some kind of evolution of the character and stuff. People are, you know, they didn't pick anything and stuff. And I mean, in wrestling, a lot of times people are from one place. You know, you look, you know, personally, they're not from there and stuff. I mean, they got guys, you know, playing um, Muslims, you know, who are Italian and stuff like that. So it, it, it happens. But this was fine for what it was. And um, I like where this angle is going and stuff. Yeah, now, now I'm more interested in it that they threw that wrinkle in there. There's a backstage segment. I really like this because, you know, obviously I love Allie and Braxton, but she's icing her head. I'm not so sure there was actually ice in there, but um, she was icing her head, talking about the situation with Taryn uh, along with Braxton. And Gar this is, man, this was so funny to me. So Garza comes out with this 
Hollywood Hispanic movie accent, like, are you okay? Like, I, f- I felt like he's like, mamacita, are you okay? And I found it so freaking funny. And then Braxton gets up and he's kind of playing the jealous boyfriend angle. And I think Braxton's verbal skills are really underrated. That's one of the reasons I like him so much. When like when he talks, I, I really listen. I really I really like when he's speaking. And uh, you know he's he's acting like an ass. So found it funny just just the stereotypical like are you okay like it, it randomly happens and then you see guards are just standing there with this look on his face guards of all people. And then uh, Sutter hits him with a comprende rico suave. So <laughs> thought it was hilarious. What do you think about this one? Um, once again, if I am, gives Braxton something to do, um, you know, I don't know if this was just a one-off thing or, you know, where they have a little side feud and stuff like that, but nothing wrong with that. Um, seems like the, you know, jealous boyfriend angle and stuff. I, I think potentially, you know, where they're looking towards is, you know, splitting him alley apart, which I think will do, do wonders for both of them. That way you, you could, you know, plug Braxton into the mid card and then have alley mixing up with the knockouts, but this was fine. Yeah, I think they both need something a little bit different. And I think Braxton is going to be a breakout guy once he finds that right angle for him. Because I think he's got the mic skills, the verbal skills for it. It's just how do we make him a little less you know, vanilla on screen and do something with him. So I like it. And then hopefully this sets something up for, for Ali as well. Because there's only so much they can do coming out as a couple. So then we get a couple video packages for Pagano and Taya. So I believe Taya is coming next week. That's going to be great. Don't know who her opponent is, um, but they've got that'll be so that'll be two knockouts matches next week. So awesome! And then um, main event time. No, yep, it is main event time. Eli Drake and Chris Adonis versus Eddie Edwards and Johnny Impact. I'm not gonna bullshit anyone here. I took a uh, sleeping pill a little bit before this, and because uh, I'm 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 adjusting to daytime hours. I've been working nights for years, for about five years, and now uh. Working on military orders for the next half year or so, and I'm working days, so it's um, adjusting a little bit. So I had to take a sleeping pill, and this kind of knocked me out a little earlier than I wanted to. So I was struggling to get through this match a little bit, and um, I'm gonna go bed, go ahead and uh, watch it again. But from what I, but from what I saw here, Eddie Edwards and Johnny Impact looked really good. Chris Adonis even even worked in here because there's been some matches that he's been featured, and he's been a nightmare thought he did okay here so i'm gonna rely on you a little bit for this one what were your thoughts on this main event um it was good uh it looked it looked like it was designed to showcase um what johnny impact can do in the ring for those who might not have uh seen him or familiar with his work my only thing was i felt like it went on way too long for a tag match especially you know tag match you know where uh, tag team titles i know neither one of these teams are champions you know, are not all because it went on for 25 minutes, but it was fine. Um, the right team won. Uh, the right guy got the pin in Eli. Um, and like I said, his uh, title rings off to a good start. I like the way that they're using him. They're making him like a big deal on the uh, reestablishing of Eli Drake as a main event player. Um, so far, so good. You know what? Something that um, I was a little shocked with is when they made the stipulation. Usually in pro wrestling, that is a pretty telltale sign that um, he, that the team of Eddie or Johnny was probably going to win this thing. And um, sure enough, Eli Drake ended up getting the win. Looks like they're calling the finish of the gravy train, not the Eli drop like they uh, uh, alluded to a, at a slam reversary. So you're right. He's off to a good start. He gets the, he gets the win. Chris Adonis easily could have taken the, the fall on this. Um, he could have ate that pin easily, but he wins a match. And you're right, it, it was a little long. I wouldn't have minded if they took three or four minutes off this and maybe added it to the OV, OVE and Mario Boker and Fala Ba match. But, you know, I, maybe that's why I was falling asleep a little bit because it was so long, but uh, that, that pill was definitely kicking in a little bit on me. So, good main event. Eli Drake doesn't have to defend against either of these guys at least not for now. So, so we'll see. Um, I, I can see a number one contendership match between Johnny impact and Eddie Edwards happening, but maybe they do the bound for glory series. Uh, whatever they call it. Is that what they call it? Bound for glory series. 
Yeah, but I think before then, I don't know if you're going to get to this, but I think um, Matt, he announced uh, after the match that uh, uh, Seidel was going to invoke his uh, championship match and uh, he was going to face uh, Eli Drake. And what was cool, and I know you had talked about this, you're all like, they never really announced what uh, championship uh, Seidel was going to go for. And um, w- which was cool, um, Josh actually mentioned on commentary you know, saying like, oh, you know, I thought he was going to go for the Asian championship. And I know we all kind of probably figured he wasn't going for that. But the fact that he threw that in there, that I think I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, he kind of he kind of saved it because there was no drama, no nothing behind it. They didn't even bring it up last week, I don't think. Uh, and they, they did they did briefly uh, mentioned Lashley losing to a guy half his size. But there was no drama to this, so I kind of would have liked to see maybe Matt Seidel come out and actually say this. But So this should be a good match. It, it appears to be the main event for next week. Um, Matt Seidel's been doing amazing work. He's undefeated, so if Eli Drake were to win this match, I think it would be a good um, uh, another match to catapult him even further. So looking forward to it quite a bit, uh, Matt Seidel versus Eli Drake. They, they close the show as they seem to do every week with the America's Top Team yeah. Dan Lambert thing. I really don't want to talk about it any further. Again, it's, it's just, it's becoming a little too much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if next week it didn't happen at all. Because for a group of guys who want someone to stop wrestling so bad, they're sure, they're sure as hell supporting him and showing up at all his matches. And he's not even fucking anybody. Well, he hasn't in these past past couple of weeks i can't recall is they throwing up confrontation break apart and then that's it right so um I, I i'm hoping that there's nothing regarding these guys next week i say uh i say ban them from the building for a week <laughs> and uh let us focus because there's there's a good card for next week i mean these matches and so viewership is down a little bit this week and they had some competition but there's one thing I've always noticed when they don't promote the matches that are happening or they promote them at the last minute, viewership is never that good. And now we know we're getting two matches. We're getting that knockouts tag team match. Uh, what's the other tag team match we're getting? Uh, I thought there was one. Oh, yeah, the uh, X Division one. There's going to be a grand championship match. Uh, they didn't say when it was, I'm assuming, though. We're getting a global championship match. We're getting the debut of Taya. So we're getting five. We already know five matches for next week that are good that are exciting so i think next week uh knock on wood does a little bit better in the ratings but i have noticed that when they don't when they don't uh really promote what's going on until the last minute people don't get excited enough to tune in and i'm always talking about how it's got to be must see if they want people to turn it tune in and not do the dvr thing so um any closing thoughts regarding the episode of impact wrestling um, it was another good episode, uh, solid, like I'm always talking about, I like uh, progression of storylines and uh, development of characters, and they've been doing that these past three episodes. Um, as far as the ratings, I, you know, I've come to realization, especially now, you're going to have football and stuff starting. Um, yeah, they got to put on a card that's going to be must-see. And I mean, I know like you were saying, like they got to do away from the DVR numbers and stuff, and I think if they were to go by DVR numbers, the viewership would be really high. Because I think what happens, too, is, you know, with Impact airing on a Thursday, you know, for some people, whatever your schedule, like, it might, you might not be able to catch it in, but you record on the DVR and you're able to watch it Friday. And unfortunately, that kind of hurts, you know, the viewership on Thursday. And stuff. So I just think they need to put on good quality programming, giving us good quality matches and line progression. Things will only move upward, so all right. Yeah, I think this next episode has the potential to be about as good as uh, Destination X was. I, I really, I really think the card is really solid. I wouldn't be surprised if they squeeze a Braxton Sutter and Garza Jr. match in there, but you know, it looks like we're already looking at five matches. But um, th- this one has a lot of potential if they just, you know, history shows that there's going to be at least a couple three-minute matches in there, but. I, I really hope that's not the case. So, All right, that's going to do it for the Impact Review this week. Please hit the subscribe button if it's your first time listening. I really appreciate you if you stuck with us to the very end of the podcast here. And for Row the Great, this is BQ. We will talk to you next time. Peace.